welcome to worship at Hosada Lutheran Church. We're glad that you are with us today. A couple announcements as we begin our worship service. As a reminder, we have a midweek worship during the season of Lent, which is posted to our YouTube channel every Wednesday. This year, the focus of these worships include faith stories of members from our congregation. So please note that those are on our YouTube channel and uploaded every Wednesday during the season of Lent. If you are planning on requesting to meet at the church and your group is 10 or less, please make sure you contact Jody Solem to get scheduled on our calendar. Two groups are able to meet a day, and in order to manage that schedule, we ask that you contact Jody. Praying in color sessions with Pastor Krista continue this week. Please contact her directly if you have questions or are interested in participating in those sessions. One is held on Tuesday evenings, the other Wednesday morning at Hosanna. And finally, remember to check our website for information regarding various events that are happening, meetings that are occurring. All of that information may be found on our website and through our newsletter, which is also posted on our website. So check in frequently with our website to receive updated information. It's great to have you here today. Welcome to worship. Again and again. We come to this space. Again and again. We gather as a community. Again and again. We move closer to God. And again and again. God is here. God chooses us. God loves us. God will lead us to wholeness. So again and again, let us worship holy God. Often the first step to change is listening. We have to listen to those that we hurt. We have to listen to creation as she cries. We have to listen to the voices of the oppressed if we ever hope to make things right. So today, as we begin our time of prayer of confession, we start with a time of silence. And then we will pray together, trusting that God is always listening to us and that God's ears listen with love. So let us confess together. Listening God, take what is closed in us and open it. Take what is distracted in us and settle it. Take what is hurting in us and hold it. Take any and all parts of us that create distance from you. For we are like Peter, O oh God. We argue what we don't know. We fear what we cannot see. And we most almost always speak sooner than we listen. So open us, settle us, hold us, and forgive us. We long to hear you more clearly. We long to know you more fully. With hope we pray, and with gratitude we confess. Amen. Siblings in Christ, we confess with gratitude because we know that God has already heard and forgiven us in Christ Jesus. No matter what we have done or left undone, we are held in God's hand. So rest in this good news. God invites us in. God meets us where we are. God hears our prayers, and God forgives us. Thanks be to God for a love like that.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, do you guys know how to play the game telephone? No. Yeah? yeah no? Well, let me tell you how. You whisper something into the person next to you and try and, and have it be the same as what you heard. So, if I say a sentence in Taryn's ear, she's going to whisper it in Brock's ear, and then Brock's going to whisper it in Grandpa's ear, and we're going to see if he got the right message, okay? All right, here we go. Okay, Grandpa, what did I say? I'm going to get ice cream on the weekend. We can, can we get? I think we should get ice cream on the weekend. That was pretty close. Okay, Very good. good. But there was a little bit of change just because more ears heard it. And then if you don't say it exactly, then somebody could change it. But that's a good example of how we listen, how well we listen. So thank you. So we just saw that little video of um, our two grandkids, Brock and uh, Taryn, and then Mike and I, playing the game of telephone. And I'm hoping that a lot of you have played that, and maybe you'll want to do that now with um, some of your family. But it, it was a good um, reminder of just how important it is for us to do a good job of listening and listening carefully. Um, it pay, we need to pay close attention because if we change the words of what the person told us, it can change the whole meaning. And then if you don't get the whole meaning correct, it kind of changes the whole message. So the, the gospel for today that we're going to be hearing more about when Pastor Krista talks is um, talks about Jesus and he's talking to his disciples, his helpers. Um, when he was here on earth and he's trying to kind of prepare them before what's coming because he knows that they're going to be going to Jerusalem that things are going to get a little more serious and he wants his disciples to be prepared for some of this that's going to happen and in the process we, f we find that the, the disciples just aren't really listening very well. They're not, for whatever reason, they're not taking what Jesus is saying all that seriously. And you know, they had spent quite a bit of time with, with Jesus already, and they should have known that everything he said would be very important. So I, it makes one think, why is it that we don't listen sometimes? What makes us listen sometimes, but not all the time? So that's just what I want to talk to you about today. Um, maybe when, we, when, when somebody is ta talking to us, one of the reasons we don't listen well is, well, we're excited about something else. We're very distracted, and we just can't really tune in to what the words are that somebody's trying to tell us. So that might have been one of the reasons the disciples didn't listen. Um, sometimes we think we already know what's, what he's going to say. And so then we just kind of go empty-headed and think about something else and, and don't, don't get the message once again. But, and sometimes we don't want to hear what's being said. And maybe that was the case for some of the disciples. They had remembered that Jesus had maybe said something about um, what was going to happen, but they just decided, uh, I, I'm not going to listen so closely to this. I, I'll just listen another time. Or maybe they just weren't paying attention because they were tired, or they were hungry, 
or there was a baby crying over there and they decided to listen to that instead, they were, they were drawn away from it. There's lots of reasons why we don't listen. But the, the thing is, when we don't listen, when we don't really listen to people that are important in our lives, like our parents, or our teachers, or our friends, or say Pastor Krista, sometimes we miss out on a very important piece of news. Something that is exciting, or something that keeps us safe, or something that we need to know to make our life easier. Well, we also need to listen to God's words. When he speaks to us through uh, our ministers, through our Sunday school teachers, and through the word of God, the Bible is where Jesus talks to us. And we can go there and read and always learn more about him. And when Jesus said so much about how we should follow his example and how we should love one another, those were two very important things that all of us, all of the people that have lived since Jesus came to, to very, to take today, it's very important that we listen. So by listening, we can learn. And to be better Christians, we need to follow what we hear through all of these sources and know that by speaking and listening and knowing God's word, we can learn to be much better listeners. Thank you for your attention. I have a short prayer that I'd like you to join me in. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for all the ways you speak to us through other people, through your word and through our hearts. Help us to listen carefully. In Jesus' name, amen. And I have just a quick short um, song that I'd like to share with you. Don't know if anybody remembers it, but it goes like this. Hey, hey, anybody listening? Hey, hey, anybody there? Hey, hey, anybody listening? Anybody care? We've got good news, good news, good news, good news. Tell the Lord we'll soon be found here. Good news, good news, good news, good news. Let's all sing of Jesus' love here. Hey, hey, anybody listening? Hey, hey, anybody there? Hey, hey, anybody listening? Anybody care? The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7 and 15 to 16. As with Noah, God makes an everlasting covenant with Abraham and Sarah. God promises this old couple that they will be the ancestors of nations, though they have no child together. God will miraculously bring forth new life from Sarah's womb. The name changes emphasize the firmness of God's promise. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestors of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai and your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for the second Sunday in Lent is Psalm 22, verses 
23 through 31. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominions belong to the Lord, who rules over the nation. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. from the Gospel of Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and to be killed and three days rise again. He said to them all this to them quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at the disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want, any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Have you ever played the game of telephone? You know, when you whisper a phrase to someone else and it go, gets passed along to one another, and by the time it makes it to the end of the line, the message was all garbled up, and not even close to the original? Or maybe you found yourself, a family member or a friend, that has selective hearing and only hears what they want to hear. I think Peter's in that boat today. In the scripture text, of, in the Gospel of Mark, we, if you look at the text before it says, Jesus began teaching, there's the word then in today's text. Now, then it makes me go, God, what happened before that we're transitioning to then? So I'm going to tell you. Jesus had asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter's response in a typical Peter form is, you are the Messiah. Jesus has now been identified as Messiah to his disciples and to those that were around. Now Jesus begins teaching. But teaching a lesson that Peter, the disciples, 
and all those gathered around, I'm not sure they were prepared to hear. Now we're going to get glimpses of Peter and the disciples throughout the Gospel of Mark about what they were expecting from a Messiah. The anointed one coming to save God's people. Their expectations are rooted in earthly images of a Messiah. They have images of Jesus witnessing Jesus performing miracles and healings. They have images and experiences of Jesus being sought after. They've experienced the joy and fanfare of Jesus being welcomed. They've witnessed Jesus debating the religious leaders and besting those religious leaders in those debates. They will even debate who gets to sit on Jesus' right and Jesus' left. Jesus' followers and disciples, even Peter, seem to have rose-colored glasses of what it means to follow the Messiah. And then Jesus begins teaching with words that they don't want, or at least Peter doesn't want to hear. Jesus very plainly states what is to come that he, as son of man, must undergo rejection, suffering, and death. And Peter doesn't want to hear this. He does not want this to happen. He has his ideas of what the Messiah is to be. So Peter tries to quiet Jesus. But Jesus isn't going to be quiet. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Jesus responds to Peter with a jarring response, Get behind me, Satan. Jesus called Peter out on what was getting in between Peter, and honestly most of humanity, and God. Jesus is not only teaching Peter, but the disciples, and all those gathered, and all of humanity, He's calling Peter and you and I out. Peter, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Setting our mind on human things, that's easy to do. It's logical and it's easy to rationalize. Of course we want to and need to provide for our families. Of course we need to take care of our homes, our church. Of course we want a good job and a good paycheck. Of course we want to know the answers to problems and we want to have solutions. And of course, maybe we even want to be in control. I wonder if any of these are ringing a bell in your heart. But Jesus calls Peter the disciples, those gathered, and you and I to a higher calling. One that calls us to take up our cross, to look at our lives, to take a stand. Do our lives reflect who we are in Christ? In other words, are our hearts and minds set on divine things? over human things. Now I want to take an aside here because as pastor I hear this text referenced so many times. The phrase, take up your cross. And I hear it said and said by people who are struggling and suffering. And they're trying to make sense of their struggling or suffering or justify it by saying, well, I guess this is the cross that I have to bear. I want to put this in historical context because in the context of this text, this isn't about brokenness and human suffering in the world, but it's about taking a position. Those following Jesus 
are taking a position to follow Jesus and live in the rules of the kingdom of God. Or to continue to live under the oppression and rules of the empire, the earthly empire. Jesus is providing for those who are longing for a Messiah, a savior. But he's beginning to let them know it's probably not going to be how they envision it. The coming of the savior, the coming of the kingdom of God. It's going to be, begin and bring conflict with the empire, conflict with the social norms of the day. It's going to be about the tension between the earthly kingdom and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, which calls humanity to love and care for the outcast, to love and care for the poor, the oppressed, and the broken. Now this is good news if you're one of the above group, the poor, the cat, outcast, the oppressed, or the broken. However, this is not so good news if you're in the position of power or are the oppressor, or you think you're better than others, or you need to be in control because you're confronted with the reality of the gospel. The reality of the gospel is we all fall short. We all need a savior. And as hard as we try, we will never earn or deserve our way and place in the kingdom of God. No one, even the authority of the empire in Jesus' day, none of us are right before God on our own. The kingdom of God. The gospel calls us to trust, to listen, and to hear the things we may not even want to hear. Again and again, beloved of God, we are called. We're called into the kingdom of God right here, right now. Again and again, we are welcomed into the kingdom of God right here, right now. Again and again, each and every day, we are chosen, we are loved, and being made whole. Again and again, we are called to live into and bear witness to the kingdom of God, here and now. So here's the good news. God is present and among us. And this God is faithful and trustworthy. We see him made real in Jesus, the long promised and long awaited for Messiah. And Jesus shatters our expectations about what this means. The Son of Man did not dial down his ministry to spare his life or to ease his suffering. Jesus' commitment to Peter, the disciples, the followers, to you, to us all, to humanity, literally knows no limits. And neither, as Easter tells us, does God's life-giving power. And that, beloved people of God, is a message that I hope we hear loud and clear again and
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of his Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Beloved people of God, the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those who are worshiping with you, or to take time today to text or call somebody and share God's peace with them later today. Our worship service now continues with an opportunity to give our thanks to God through our gifts and our offerings. We invite you to use this time to prepare your offerings to send it in or to send them in electronically. Although we are worshiping together but apart, this is, it's important to remember that the ministry of Hosanna continues. And it's through your continued generous gifts and offerings we continue to do the work of the kingdom. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Again and again, 
you choose us, you love us, and you restore us to wholeness. We entrust ourselves and all prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, receive this blessing. As you leave worship today, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again. Until God's promised day, know that God chooses you. God loves you. God will lead you to wholeness. Go with courage. Go with heart. Go with peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. to God.